tire, as y'all can see, we got the stang up in the air. You got all the wheels taken off on all four corners. I've already taken off these two bolts. They're gonna be, I believe those are 15 millimeter bolts. Here they are. Went ahead and took off these two and then just have this one finger tightened on, uh, tightened down just so that I'll be able to drop the strut, but it, the strut, but it won't all the way, uh, you know what I'm saying, fall out when it's time. So now we're gonna go ahead and start by removing the end links from the struts and then we'll keep going. All right, so now that we got the sway bar end link disconnected, it's literally just the 18 millimeter bolt and uh, 18 millimeter wrench, you know what I'm saying, to hold it in place and then you undo it. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off the ABS line. It's a clip right here and a clip right there. You just wanna get you a little pry tool, get in there and pop it off. Kinda hard to do this one here. I don't know how well y'all can see, but we have to remove the caliper, so we have to get this bolt off and this bolt off. All right, y'all, once you get the caliper off, you can go ahead and push it out the way let it sit on the K member. Then you're gonna go on to go ahead and take the rotor off and start working on these bolts. Now, with these bolts, you don't wanna take them all the way off. You wanna just take them off uh, and then tighten them on by a little bit of threads, a couple threads, because you gotta hammer them out because they're splined in. So don't take the nuts all the way completely off. Just loosen them until they're on like the last two threads. Then grab yourself a hammer and knock them out. All right, y'all, so, so I didn't take the rotor off but I went ahead and used the 24 millimeter socket. Got both of these bolts undid. Now I'm about to grab a hammer and go ahead and knock out the stud and we should be good to completely take out the strut. All right, so once y'all get the bolts removed so you can remove the strut from the spindle, it should be hanging. That's why you left that one bolt on there finger tight. This one right here. Um, as soon as you undo it, the strut will actually fall out and you'll be able to pull it out. All right, y'all, now that you have these stock struts out, you wanna come over to your new springs and your spring compressor. You wanna go ahead and get that set up. Compress the spring, um, take it out, and then you swap out the spring and the shock bushings um, for the new ones that IBROC uh, provides for you, and then you keep going from there. So let's go ahead and get this set up, and then I'll show you guys. All right, y'all, once y'all got the strut and the spring compressor, I'm gonna go ahead and use a 21 millimeter socket and undo this bolt at the top of the strut, and then the top hat should come off. You can go ahead and swap out the spring. All right, y'all, once y'all unscrew that bolt, watch out, because the strut's gonna come flying out. You dig what I'm saying? And now that we got everything taken apart, we'll go ahead and release the machine. Be careful, though, because that joint is fully compressed. You know what I'm saying? And then, Go ahead and start the reassembly with the new spring. All right, so now you want to come to the shift boots, bump stops. You want to go ahead and get these set up, and then you'll put it on the strut. Get you guys a side-by-side -side -side comparison. This is the stock front. This is the eyebot front. Significantly smaller. All right, y'all. Once y'all get the spring on, you can go ahead and set it back in the car. Just finger tighten these bolts so that it holds itself on. Reconnect the spindle. Put your rotor and your caliper back on plug in the abs wire plug it back in then tighten up your end leak and you should be good to lower the car repeat the same process on the other side all right now once you're done guys it should look like this got everything tightened down go ahead and repeat the process on the passenger side and then we can start on the rear all right y'all just got the passenger side finished up about to go ahead and move to the rear first things we're going to want to do is take i believe it's a 10 millimeter bolt take this bolt off and release the brake line and then we're gonna go ahead and take these two bolts off because we have to replace the bump stop um, and the strut and then we'll drop the subframe, the subframe and pull the spring out put the new spring in and then repeat the process on the other side tighten everything back up and drop the car all right once you get that bolt off just go ahead and kind of thread it through so you don't lose it then you're gonna take off the strut by removing these two bolts Pulling off this plastic cap right here and undoing that bolt, we'll get this harness off of the strut and then we can go ahead and replace the bump stop. All right, y'all, so once y'all get that done, what you're gonna wanna do is loosen these two bolts right here and then undo the subframe bolt. And then there's another one back here, this one. So you'll undo this one last. You wanna make sure you have the subframe supported by one of these joints. 
Um, and then after you loosen those, the subframe should drop and you'll be able to pull out the spring. All right, so once you get the, sub, the subframe bolt out, you have those brackets loose, it should angle like that. Make sure you go ahead and support the subframe and then remove the rear subframe bolt, this one right here, and the whole thing should drop and you'll be able to take out the spring. The next day. What's good, y'all? You dig what I'm saying? As you guys can see, it is the complete next day. I got on a whole different outfit. J.I. Squad merch, of course. Make sure you go get yours. Official underscore BYL dot shop. It is still live. The IG, go tap in. We got a whole new line of merch coming. New logos, new designs, new everything. So make sure you guys tap in. Um, but yeah, man, it is the next day. I did stop recording because I'm not even going to lie. Doing the rears, I almost lost my fingers twice. Um, <laughs> so long story short, after we loosen the subframe bolts, I found that even if you loosen the subframe bolts for the side that you're working on, it's still not going to be enough leeway for you to pull the spring out. And I learned that the hard way. Um, so if you're doing this at home, go ahead and undo all the subframe bolts, all of them. That way you'll have enough slack, enough play to really pull the uh, control arm down to, to the point where you can actually pull the spring out. Because we did not do that. Um, I had my boy Efron with me pushing on the brake, trying to get it, you know what I'm saying, to help me out while I'm pulling on the control arm, um, you know what I'm saying, to try to get enough space to pull the spring out. Um, and that wasn't even working. So he ended up grabbing a two by four, I'm serious, a two by four piece of plywood, shoved it in between the chassis and on top of the rotor and was pushing down on it while I was pulling the spring out. Now what happened was I pulled on the spring and it actually moved. And when it moved, I guess he thought that it had came all the way out. So he let go of the wood. Now the subframe came crushing down on my poor finger. <laughs> And it pinned it there for like 15 to 30 seconds, bro. It was excruciating pain. But either way it goes, we got the spring out, went ahead, put the iBox spring in. Make sure you guys use the isolators that come with the spring. I mean, not that comes with the spring, but the stock ones. Make sure you put them on the spring. And then at the bottom, um, I call it like a cradle. In the cradle where the spring sits, there's like, um, there's also another, not a top hat, but a bottom hat. You gotta make sure that the spring is turned to the point where the hat is touching the uh, cradle. There's like a little cutout. You'll see it when you, you know what I'm saying, when you're looking at your car. But anyway, I went ahead and put that together um, and then went to the other side and the same thing happened on the other side. I, it was excruciating pain. This finger is swollen. It's, it's all bad, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? The car is sitting pretty good. It looks good. Um, I ain't even gonna lie, that was a pretty good drop. I recorded this outro yesterday at the HQ, but it went in slow motion. Don't don't ask me how, I don't know, iPhone. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the car. Um, I do need to get the car up in the air and go ahead and you know make, look over all the bolts and everything, make sure everything is tightened down. I'm getting a little bit of rattling noise. And then unfortunately, when I was putting the passenger side caliper back on the rotor, um, the brake pad tipped a little bit. So now my brakes are squeaking. I got some pads on the way. I'm already gonna, um, I'm already looking into replacing the rotors and the pads with some power stops, some drill to slotted uh, rotors all the way around. And there's a powder stop, uh, power stop brake pads. So y'all stay tuned for that, but enjoy this little montage of the staying. It is dirty, but here it is. remember at first it was four fingers all around now we only get two in the front and in the rear it's kind of a tighter fit it's like a finger and a half in there and the car still has to settle so in the next two days the car will actually settle and we'll get the true ride height but as you can see it is a significant drop i'll go ahead and put a picture on the screen right now of what it used to sit at stock and then you guys see what it is at now 
make sure you guys go ahead and hit that thumbs up video, uh, button drop a comment in the comment section down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already on the road to 3k and we're almost there i'll see you guys in the next one peace